viewers and welcome to a new video. Today we are going to be playing Ducky Star Hearts of Iron game once again in Manila. Since a fair amount of you requested I do how to win as Japan, well I'm gonna do it I suppose. Why not? I'm going to be using these settings and what are the goals? Well, I'll hold your hand through this whole run and explain to you what you need to do, why you need to do that to be China and the allies within the Pacific. So without wasting any more time, let's jump straight into the video. Oh, it's gonna change alright, just not the way you expect it will. So Japan in 1933, we have a fairly decent industry, even a puppet here in Manchuria, well, it's called Manchuko technically, a decently sized army, if we take the Manchurian army into account. An amazing navy, and as you know, Japan partakes within the Sino-Japanese War and World War II. So we're gonna try to win those. For starters, the sliders and ministers. Of course, I'm going to go to a talk lobby for faster production time and lower production cost. I'm going to change the head of intelligence minister for research time minister. I'm going to change the minister of security to the man of the people. And I'm going to change the chief of the army to this person. I'm happy with that so far. We choose him for the research time, this guy for less supply consumption, this dude can sit here for a bit and this boyo for money production. The rest of the ministers I'll change later. Ah, uh, technology wise. I'm going to keep light infantry doctrine because it's a great doctrine. As you can see even the very first level gives me quite a bit of mobility for my unit. So I'm not going to switch to mobility focus. I'm just gonna get early hospital system. I'm gonna be fighting in China. Attrition is gonna be a thing. I'm also going to focus on industrial technology. As Japan we don't have the biggest industry in the world and the USA is obviously going to outmuscle us. So we're going to have to try our best to keep up with them to a degree. Then some oil refining techs since as Japan we don't have a lot of oil. Antibiotics won't hurt definitely. And let's research 1930 RT. Good start I'd say. So what we are going to do now is prolong terms of service because we need a little bit more manpower for production purposes and producing things faster is also a very nice thing let's be honest practically everything here we can stop building maybe besides the light carrier it's very close to being constructed so what we are going to do is put everything into consumer goods and lower our descent since we're lowering our descent we're gaining money and we're going to use money for the economic recovery policy Simple, simple. Ah, this is also a bit annoying, but what can you do? And here you get a decision. The Five Ministers Conference, where you can either go down the historical path of expanding southwards, or going towards the north to beat up the Soviet Union. We're obviously going to go with the historical route. No oh, one, my decision has already bore some fruit. I get a bit of a puppet here within the north of China and lose a bit of descent. So after enacting the economic recovery policy, we get a pretty good upgrade in our peacetime IC modifier, less descent, one to watch hawk lobby and all that good stuff. So now what I would do is put a little bit of industry into supplies, because as you would notice, Manchuko doesn't have many cores, probably only one, and there are events to fix that, such as Kirin province subjugation, which will give them cores and it will be a very nice thing. So we do that right now and continue lowering our descent. The descent will likely lower by itself at this point, so what I would do is build infrastructure in all of our main island's provinces until everywhere is at least 40. And while we're at it, I'm also going to industrialize Japan. Since we need a bigger industry to build stuff, contend with the great powers and etc. However, I'm not going to be building industry within the coastal provinces, since it's a little bit suspicious. Instead, I'm going to be building it partially in Korea, because I have cores on these territories and there's 40% infrastructure plus here. Plus, we need to throw everything into industrializing, because if you industrialize now, for the rest of the game you won't have to do that, and you'll be in a good position to wage their total krieg. So since Japan is also an island nation, I'm going to be focusing on navy and the air force quite a bit as well, since the allies in World War II are, are quite something, and the Pacific theater has to be won by me. 
Oh, and I almost forgot. You have these five militia units here, and you want them to auto-upgrade into regular infantry divisions. You let you turn them into motorized when the time is right. So, as you can see here, me donating 500 supplies and whatever else did give Manchuka a few more cores. So, make a few more supplies just for this. Okay, now that round one of industrialization is done, it's time to go for round two. And within the provinces that we build the infrastructure, it should be at 33% just for that exact reason. So our little assistance here gave Manchuko a thousand cores, plus that first round of industrializing also gave us a final tech team. So everything is going according to plan for me. Also, when researching technologies as Japan, look for the best possible tech team. Because you're going to need to squeeze in all possible technologies that you can as this country. That goes for every possible other country. And for our next slide, we're going to go towards Hawk Lobby once again. As faster production equals producing things faster. And the third round of industrialization is going to be a final round of full industrialization. So stick to it. Oh, why thank you. Well, who would have thought a trade agreement would be cancelled with a country that just got annexed. So after some of these units have converted into infantry, as I said, we're going to turn them into motorized divisions. They'll play a very huge role in the upcoming war. While all this is interesting and a fairly commendable attempt, I read in Wikipedia that this coup failed. So we're going to go historically, I'd say. This is of course going to change our ministers, so we have to press a few buttons here and there. Nothing major. Excellent. Now the final line of full industrialization has been completed, we're going to build industry on our home island still, but not to such a big extent. We're going to build 15 units, all within um, non-coastal provinces plus Tokyo, and while we are at it, we're going to be building militia with artillery. You may be asking, oh, Denjikos, why militia plus artillery? Well, we can convert them into infantry units, first of all. 1936 militia plus 1936 RT has decent stats. And do not research 1935 anti-tank artillery yet. Because China is going to have primarily infantry units against you, so... You can't lose two soft attack on all of your artillery for that, just to gain one hard attack against tank units that aren't going to exist in nationalist China. So now, if you've guessed, we're going both industry and army heavy to an extent. This is probably an imperfect build-up, but it's easy to follow and easy to use. Plus, you'll have so much industry after this, you can just spam such a large fleet to keep the USA out of the war so that you can use the large army that you've built up to take India and whatever your heart desires. So since the war is going to transpire soon, we're going to collect every transport ship that we have and transport all of the units off of our home island to fight against China. Also, once you do have some extra industry, put it into upgrades, find those units that are slowly converting into motorized, and prioritize them so that they convert into motorized faster. So after completely emptying your home islands of divisions, put for now one militia in every province and upgrade them into infantry divisions. Put also one division in uh, each coastal province of Taiwan, because China can actually naval invade there sometimes, which is insane, I'll give them that. Also, during all of this, keep researching your doctrines, because the deeper you go in the light infantry doctrine, the better and better it becomes. Yeah, chief, I don't think you're gonna stop me from invading China here. Oh, looks like we can already enact the Marco Polo Bridge incident. I'm going to wait a little bit more to make it more historical, I guess. For the memes, let's also start researching nukes as Japan. And let's go one toward interventionist. Pretty happy with where everything is right now, so there's not really much to change there. And for the memes as well, we can start building rocket test sites as Japan in Tokyo. Since rocket test sites give a very big bonus to researching the rocketry technology. Well, at this point, let's start the Marco Polo Bridge incident. Time to teach the Chinese a lesson, definitely. So what I'm going to do here now is enact general mobilization, deal with the descent partially. And my strategy here is to encircle the units here in the south of China, 
that's going to be your first big encirclement you'd love to strive towards. So I'm going to throw everything here and defend against the Chinese units within the northern bit. For your motorized divisions, what I would recommend is to get a logistics wizard general, since he will give them better effective supply efficiency, and that will make the units much faster. Now this is also an amazing event, because it will give nationalist China a crap ton of descent and ruin their morale plus organization. Also, we're going to give China Shanghai, because I don't really care about it, it doesn't give me any industry, and the 5 industry that China will get from Shanghai is going to be not as worth as encircling as many of the troops as possible. Yeah, at this point let's also force Germany to recognize Manchukuo and sign the anti combatant pact. So I have to even circle their troops here, you can see that in Qingdao, they have some supplies, and that means that the Chinese are using convoys to send them there. So grab literally any formation of your navy and start convoy raiding within this area. Plus, as I've said, uh, China can naval invade you and has a bit of a navy, so hunting it down is kind of important, I guess, if you uh, want to be completely dominant within the seas. So approximately 21 troops within this pocket. Not bad at all. So this is another very huge encirclement that you have to pull off against China here um, and trap Nanjing, Shanghai, etc. etc. This is going to just destroy their divisions. As you see now they have about 165 more or less and I'm curious to see how many I, I just got there. As you can see here they have no supply depots so we can start pushing here slowly. So after the nationalist Chinese army recovers they're going to start pushing you back everywhere. But to put it lightly the fun truly begins. I did a little bit of a 6D chess move since I completely encircled their capital here in Nanjing and destroyed their convoys and escorts. The rest of the troops they have are not getting supplied, which I like to see. What I'm really liking right now is that this is looking like the actual war, but I'm not navally invading their coast to cut off trade. Like, these territories are very similar to what Japan had. So after taking some Chinese land and encircling a fair bit of their troops, they only have 107 now, we can send the first peace proposal, let's claim a loyal puppet, we're not asking for much. Who would have thought that would happen? Let's finish them off then. Another fairly easy encirclement you can get here is within these two provinces, which also takes a bit of Chinese industry away from them. So after humiliating them here, we're going to deal with the northern army and destroy the communist Chinese, since they are a decent fighting force and nationalist China, I don't think, can really mount anything against me anymore. Update, middle of 1938 here. If you can Russian enemies victory points uh, just take all of them and annex the enemy if you of course have everything you need and there we go the Sanma click is the first China to fall so since China this rate is not capable of stopping me at all I'm going to rush my motorized towards Kunming to annex the Yunnan clique and while I'm at it I'm also going to try to encircle these units here in the center and annex the communists by taking Nanyang there we go another China down now nationalist China in total has 77 divisions while I have have 131 plus. They had done enough for the count at this rate. Sorry Mao, there's nothing you can do here at this point in time. Yes, at this rate I've just basically won and I'm primarily mopping up whatever resistance China is trying to push against me. So at this point what I would start doing is using the militia that I have constructed uh, to guard the islands in the Pacific that I have. I'm going to put one militia unit per island. So it's 1939 and I'd say the situation for me is just beyond amazing. If the Japanese high command had this situation in 1939, they'd be in an extremely good place. Oh, and look at that, it's February 1939 and we have destroyed nationalist China and won the war. That was quite easy. But yes, the main tips that I would give here is to keep fighting China, attempt your best at encircling their units, and once they don't have um, the divisions to oppose you, just rush their victory points. So after completely destroying the Chinese, what you do want to do is move each and every one of your divisions out of China into any random province. Why is that? Well, if you release the puppet called the Republic of China Nanjing, whatever units you had in them, they get. So all that army you built up will be part of them, which I do not want. So I try to deploy the units out of there and I'm going to release China manually. There we go. 
we have a very powerful puppet here and we are in a very very strong position so i might be asking Denjikus, you have defeated china what's your game plan now well as i said i'm going to be building a few more militia units just to clog up everything here and i'm going to start going navy heavy well for the memes we could go toward the ussr and win it eventually i'm not really in the mood so let's go with the historical route and sign a non-aggression pact with them so i'm going to start producing now transport ships convoys and convoy escorts because you can never have enough of those things as japan oh and just so you know world war ii in europe has started so i do hope that germany doesn't do badly against the ussr like last time so what i'm going to start doing now is building a crap ton of heavy submarines so that i can just scout the seas with them and uh, use that as a substitute for the navy for now that is i'm of course going to build carriers later but since i went so navy like so industry and army heavy i'm going to have to try my best to catch up and germany is going to the low countries so that should be interesting also while you are at it do trade for money with countries so that you can invest into research and get the blueprints you want for the assembly line for example or whatever your heart desires truly what a weird universe it also seems that national spain has joined the allies so that's interesting but germany only defeated france at the end of 1940 i'm not truly really excited to see what happens next thankfully at this point i can demand french indochina to become my puppet which is very useful oh beautiful and before the american embargo happens do trade with them for some money and after claiming indochina we can put pressure on thailand so they become our ally slash puppet down the line yep there we go well it's 1941 and germany just took spain they still haven't conquered yugoslavia or greece so i think that the axis are going to be a little bit subpar here just like last game what i've also been doing is building more militia because uh, i missed a few places here i need to guard and i I'll need to guard the coastal provinces of the areas that I will conquer for myself, such as the Philippines, for example. We're going to strike here definitely. Another area that I think striking at would be a good idea are the Add to Islands and this area Guam, since they're just kind of right under our nose. And I'll tell you this, researching strategic bombers of Japan is a good idea, not because you're going to be building them, but because you can keep track of the distance where the United States of America can nuke you from. So, for example, these Shred bombers have a range of 1500, so from Guam, they are 1000 kilometers from reaching your mainland and bombing it. So taking Guam and holding it and keeping the Americans away while you're at it is a very good idea. Plus, of course, they're going to research better Shred bombers, so just keep taking islands to keep the Americans away. I'd imagine that this coup had to happen, so sure. Either we can basically bend over to the Americans, or I'm going to defend myself. I think you know what I'm gonna do. It's September 1941 and, well, most of Europe is under Axis control. However, I don't like the fact that they still haven't launched an invasion of the USSR yet. Also, I messed up a little bit admittedly by not building marines. So, I only have three marines to invade Manila, the Philippines. So, this is going to be a hit or miss, to put it lightly. Now, well, since Pearl Harbor is going to happen soon, I think I'm going to end partial mobilization and then remobilize when the war begins. Because I need to gain the manpower back that I've wasted fighting China and well, everything else, basically. Also, since we are going further and further into the Light Infantry Doctrine, I would choose Infiltration Assault because it will allow me to receive bonuses for the units that are mostly used instead of just some mechanized here and there. So here I'll get a huge night attack move and defense for my units plus some other nifty bonuses such as attack. Well, six, well since I can mobilize again, let's have some fun, shall we? Tora, Tora, Tora! Yay! Now time to enact gen mob once again. And there we go, we have some manpower. All of our units are back on track. So let's naval invade the islands that I wanted to, starting with Guam. Amazing. We took Guam. And while we are at it, let's take Hong Kong as well. So I have slightly underestimated the resistance on Attu Island. Still not much, let's be honest. And for the memes, let's also build a nuclear reactor in Tokyo. When it comes to India, 
I'm going to go to Putao in Fall, Aijal or Hakka, and then try to cut them off in Burma to encircle them. I also sent a few army groups here to the Singapore area because it has a lot of rare materials and some metal, so this is a resource rich area. Oh, and amazing how submarines are doing something by doing absolutely nothing. How beautiful. And I was correct, it seems. Taking Manila is all that I had to do to conquer the Philippines. So after conquering the Philippines, I'm obviously going to start garrisoning it. Sadly, the invasion of Attu Island has failed miserably because they reinforced the unit, so let's do a take two. Also, why I love heavy submarines is the fact that you can also shore bomb the enemies when you are attacking them, which will give you a little bit of a bonus while you're naval invading. Oh, why thank you. Oh, amazing, we took Attu Island for ourselves. So time to reinforce it soon enough. So I'm completely clowning on the British in Singapore and my strategy of encircling them here in Burma has kind of worked, which I like to see. Oh, there we go, 100 GD time. Now nothing is going to oppose me within this theater army-wise. Besides the Soviets. Alright, it's mid of 1942. All of Philippines have been fortified by me. Atu Island has been captured. The British army in Burma has been surrounded and I'm closing in on Calcutta. Singapore is mine and I'm sending troops to there. The American Navy hasn't made any major engagements against me, which I like to see. I do suppose it means that my heavy submarines are doing an extremely good job of keeping them back. However, before advancing into the Dutch East Indies, Australia and New Zealand, I want to beat British India first and Germany is still sitting there. It's 1942. What are you doing? Attack the Soviets. So quite a few allied troops have been encircled here in Burma and at this point I'd say India is free real estate. So that's nice. You may be thinking that the fact that I am very low on oil is impacting me really badly in any way. But actually no. My Most of my army is infantry based and they have pretty nice bonuses from uh, this doctrine when it comes to moving, combat in general and etc. So, uh, me not having oil is, is not the worst thing in the world. I can refill it by taking this island, which I think I should focus on soon. There we go. Both Nepal and Burma, or Bhutan, excuse me, are out of the picture. Also, what I have for Forgotten is the fact that keeping your 1940s repair tech updated constantly will help you a lot since it reinforces ships, units, planes, and etc. faster. So do keep getting better repair techs when you can. Oh, amazing! It seems that all I had to do to annex the British Raj was take the victory point on the Indian mainland. Oh, well, it's time to liberate the British Raj, I suppose. So after I'm done with India, it's time to navally invade the Dutch East Indies, slowly and surely, plus I'm going to reinforce this area. It's 1943 and Germany still has done nothing to invade the USSR, which is not looking good at all, chief. What I think also is a good thing to do is to invade Tibet. I can get a descent-free war declaration due to my sliders and it's also not a bad idea to strengthen my puppet, China. Oh, it looks like Germany has declared war upon the USSR finally. I don't know who shot first, no, do I care really, but as long as Germany holds against the USSR I'm fine. I can invade the USSR at this point and completely save Germany, making the thing easier. However, I'm not going to help them because that will make things a bit too easy. And I'm going to LARP as historical Japan that just did not help Germany out with the USSR. So it's middle of 1943, we took India, we're slowly advancing towards the Dutch East Indies and we are planning to invade Australia eventually. None of the islands that we have captured initially have been challenged by the Americans, which I do like to see. Ugh, this is when things are getting a little bit hard. I wanted to navally invade Wake Island since it was a little bit close to me, but it looks like the AI has different plans. Well, time to retreat and regroup, I guess. You know, to my surprise, Germany is actually doing okay this time around. So hats off to them. Okay, so after taking Borneo, what I'm going to do now is take a few more Indonesian islands and then go after Australia proper. Ugh, damn it. It looks like Allied resistance is becoming more stiff and stiff as time goes on. Oh well, no worries. Because while they're defending against the meme force that I sent here, I can pull a little bit of a sneaky on them by using better troops to navally invade the Isla. Island. What a surprise! Who would have thought that would have worked? Uh, fascinating. It seems that even Turkey has joined the Axis. That doesn't happen quite often, let me tell you that. Okay, let's try something crazy. It's time to invade the land of the Down Under. Since I see Germany and Turkey struggling in the Middle East, I'm sending assistance against Iran with the hopes 
of helping them. Okay, it's 1945. Australia is being finished off by me slowly but surely. We are quite close to getting the nuclear bomb. We are winning in Iran as you can see here. Ah, so I just need to take the victory points in Australia's mainland and that's enough. What's an amazing revelation. Obviously I'm going to liberate them now since yeah. Having them as a puppet is good. Now this is one hell of an encirclement, even if I do say so myself. There are 40 allied troops in general here, which should relieve Germany of some pressure, so I can fix whatever the hell this is. Oh well, have to Germany annexed Iran. There are only 24 allied units, but still, that's a good encirclement. This is probably the rock and the hard place you don't want to be stuck between. And there goes New Zealand as well. That was a pretty major victory, I'd say. So now we can consolidate what we have gained and probably finish off the Dutch East Indies and take Wake Island, Midway, Johnston, Hawaii and maybe call it an episode since I'd say that's that's a victory right there. Ugh, cat surely got their tongue here. Okay, let's finally take Wake Island with new shiny powerful marine troops. And there we go, we are taking the final VP of the Dutch East Indies and that is it for them. Oh, it seems that even improved light infantry goes into the cold vortex. I did not know about that since I've never really played as Japan, so that's very good to know. There we go, we've taken Midway as well. I mean at this point the Soviets don't really have any troops against me or that can fight me, so at this point I think just declaring war on them is justified. I do want to strengthen China itself and Mainjiang. Plus I would imagine that Mr. Puyi would like some territory too. So I'm going to leave the AI to fighting the USSR one on one and they can easily destroy whatever the hell is here. All right. Right, let's go after Hawaii now and let's finish off what we started about five or four years ago in Pearl Harbor. Oof, it seems that the US has finally struck back after so long. Well, I guess it would be time to replace my losses, huh? Oh, it looks like the USSR has completely given up and I've gained territory from them. Yeah, I released Primorsk as a puppet because I don't really want to control them, I suppose. Sadly, we didn't get Mongolia or Xinjiang. At least Mainjiang got Tanatua, so that's a sight. And there we go, we took Hawaii completely for ourselves. Yeah, it looks like the US was the first to open the Pandora's box and nuke Germany in Berlin. There are no places where the US can nuke me from. <laughs> because 1945 uh, strategical bombers have a range of 3000 and the closest province to me I think is I think is 5000 kilometers, so I'm safe. I mean at this point I'd say it's a good idea to wrap the episode. We have done so much here as Japan. We have taken down the allies in Asia, we took Indonesia, Australia, New Zealand, kicked the US out of the Pacific primarily, and we're slowly preparing for a naval invasion of the US mainland, which is possible to do at this point, since I do have the means to do it, but uh, I, I don't want to. I'll, sh I'll stream it if everyone wants to, but I won't do it in this episode because it's probably long as hell already, but at least Germany won against the Soviets. So I hope you enjoyed the video, this, is, uh, this was how to win as Japan, and I'll see everyone whatever else I plan on doing. Goodbye everyone.